If you have followed the career of Vicksburg artist H.C. Porter, you know she's always dabbling in a new and interesting project. Her latest endeavor has taken her out of the state for a few years, but you know, wherever she goes, she takes a piece of Mississippi with her. And her deep roots here will always bring her back home. H.C., it's good to have you here. It's good to have you back home. I know you flew in, I think, last night just to be in on the show, and I'm sure to see your mom. Yes, I did. Thank yeah. you, Marshall. It's so fun to be here. Yes. I know I'm, I'm going to completely not going to fanboy on you here, but I love your work and I have for a long time. And I hope this conversation by the end of it, some of your talent rubs off. On oh, you. right. Yes. So as yeah. I appreciate what you do every day and the talent and the courage that it takes sometimes for you to get your vision out there, too. Yeah. So. Imagine that. You yeah. Know, people getting upset about artwork. Yeah. But that never happens with you, right? <laughs> well, well, it's funny. One of the early series, the Katrina pieces. I had a Which were beautiful, by the way. Thank very well you done. very much. Yeah. Um, and as a Mississippi native, Jackson, Jacksonian originally, happened yeah. to be a Vicksburger now. Yeah. Um, I spent a year on the Gulf Coast after Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. And one of the pieces that became, a, I don't know, sort of a cornerstone image was a piece called The Protector. Yeah. And it was a young boy that was standing on an upturned air conditioner and he was five years old, and his name was Dalton. And I said, come here, hop up on here. And he had a drag and a BB gun around. He's, you know, South Mississippi, and had older siblings and stuff. So he hopped up on there, and he had that BB gun, had it across his chest, like, I am protecting. And that piece called so, caused so much. Really? Uh, uproar. It was really interesting. I mean, I mean, art is there to... You know, either soothe the soul or create. Or get the soul sued. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that too. I don't know about you because, I mean, I mean, some of the work that I'm most proud of was from after Katrina also. Yeah. Right. But now, if I go past rotting garbage, it literally fires off. I mean, I, I literally see images of what I saw down there. It's just something that's still, all these years later, it's hard to get out of your head. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Post-traumatic stress. Not. I can even imagine how the... Our friends yes. on the coast, you know, what they went through. I mean, that's why yeah. people always say, what do you think about the coast? I said, I love the people on the coast, just for that reason. Right. For that reason. But, yeah, that that was when I really started noticing your work. That happened in 2005, right, August? Right. Mm -hmm. About two weeks later, I ended up on the Gulf Coast, camera in hand, cassette yeah. recorder, photographing. Of course, my work starts as a photograph. Silk screen the image on paper and then hand paint back on top of it for people who aren't familiar with it. Yeah, your process is incredible. Well, I've been documenting Mississippi since 1987, I guess. I've had yeah. my studio on Millsaps Avenue for 20 years, mm -hmm. under that first crop with Andy Young and Susan Ford and Elizabeth Robinson, okay, all of us down there, trying to figure out how to make a living. <laughs> and, um, but the process and going to the Gulf Coast really took my work to another level and yeah. to have an opportunity to give a voice to what was happening in our own backyard, just like you, you know, with the national issue of Hurricane Katrina. It wasn't just the Mississippi experience, but that became a series of 81 different portraits. 81? Paired with Gosh. oral histories. Yeah. Um, those pieces were pre-sponsored as a collection. It premiered in 2008. We had, I think, 38 different states represented with collectors from all over the country that had said, I want one of those pieces and I want to help the state help the you know, rebuilding of your community. So it was quite a journey. I was about to say 81 pieces. How long did that take you to do? Forever. People would call imagine. me. They'd say, what number are you on today? <laughs> oh, I'm on number 39. You know, knock that off. Three, four, five days later, call me back. All these empty cans of Red Bull are on the oh, ground. Right, and exactly. You're, you're sitting there painting with your hand shaking. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize I really had to be sort of sequestered out of my studio. Yeah. They moved me to what is now the AmeriCorps in Vicksburg, the old... Um, All Saints Episcopal School, yeah. there's a little house there. And they said, here, this is where you're going to be for the next eight months so we can finish it. Because we had to set the deadline yeah. for the show to open. And it was just um, paint, stand up, walk around in a circle, sit down, paint, paint, paint. It was crazy. I'm surprised you didn't like get into selling cars or something after that because that would have <laughs> burned me out. It was tough. It yeah. was. I really had to step back and take a breather too. Yeah, but so. I'm so glad you did it though. And and you you just 
discovered at that point that you're as much of a storyteller and journalist as anybody. That's well, and that's something that I'd always wanted to do was to add the oral histories. Because yeah. as I would meet interesting people all over the state and photograph them and know that I was creating work, they would tell me these really wonderful stories that I would just have to know in my, you know, a little seat in my head. And I would think, why didn't I record that, what they were right. saying? So the Katrina Project, of course, was that opportunity to have the microphone there. And I was accepted as a Mississippian, too, you yeah. know? So it really made a difference of what people were willing to share. But we all love to talk. We're Mississippians. So, you know, even when we opened the show in 2008, three years later, yeah. We had sponsor Mississippi Power helped bring all those families back up to the coast to the opening and as many as we could find anyway. And there were over 50 families that were in the paintings or, you know, mm -hmm. a family member was in and they came up and some of them never rem remembered that I had been there. They really? didn't know until they yeah. got this letter. You're part of this project. We want to share this with you and we're paying to bring you all up here and celebrate what you've been through and the recovery of the state and all that. And of course, some of the kids that are in the images were now three years older too. And it was just, it was an incredible night. One of so. the things I discovered too is that people were incredibly grateful that Mississippi's story was being told. Yes, yeah. yes. And it was so different from, you know, it was just so different because yeah. we stood there and realized Mother Nature was the one that had taken our you know, livelihood and right. our structures and our, you know, everything. Um, so it was a little bit easier. I think there was less controversy in the whole thing. When you were so. a kid and your mom was painting and you kind of discovered, did she say, well, you're really good at this and she encouraged you and she gave you, helped you get classes or how did that process work? Well, when I think I was about 15, my mom was given a camera like an Olympus, a new SLR, yeah. this is the 70s, right? So she promptly said, I really don't want to spend any time on this. Here, you know, let's do, let's let you focus on it. So within six months, I had gone to Millsaps to some uh, classes, mm -hmm. even as a younger kid, and I had my own dark room, and I really wow. wanted to pursue this. And then, of course, you become the photographer for the paper at school yeah. at MRA, which was my, where I had graduated. And um, so, yes, yeah, she did. And that was a big step, because then I realized I wanted to not just be a painter, but also a photographer. Yeah. And then to combine it, that's what I tried to do in using the silk screen. So to go from the photography to the silk screen, so the printmaking in the middle, and then the painting back in on top of that. It gives me the, the fun job of getting to do everything that I love instead of just focusing on one or the other. Well, that's what's so amazing. Of course, you have a, a photography and a painting a degree right. from the University of Alabama. Was yeah. that how you ended up at Alabama? Because you realized that you could do both? Or how did you do that? Uh, scholarship. Uh, that. So National Scholastic Arts. Yeah. I had a portfolio that competed and I yeah. won a scholarship to Alabama. I was headed to Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. I'd already gone up there. And uh, then they just said, here, you know, we want to pay you to come over. And doesn't it's it like amazing that. how the loyalty <laughs> suddenly go that direction? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, and what bad loyalty? I mean, you yeah. know, roll tide. So. <sighs> I Sorry, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my master's from there, and I still can't even say I that know, yet. Yeah. So, but that that's incredible. And of course, um, you came back <laughs> home, and like I said, you were in Jackson. You were amongst the first artists on that, and that I mean, okay, I'm a pen and ink guy, so right. I love value, and I love you know the boldness and what you do. I mean, I just look at it and go, okay, that's really strong. I mean, when you first started out, did your work? I mean, how how long has it taken you to develop the style that you have? You know, it's funny. Um, when I introduced the silk screen, mm -hmm. of course, that's what gives it that high contrast, that black and white yeah. ink, that real graphic nature right. that you're talking about that attracts you as a pen and ink guy. Exactly. So um, from that, I was doing early on some abstract paintings, so much so, and they were dark. And, you know, my senior show was all this layered stuff, and my parents were like, are you okay? <laughs> no, seriously, I'm fine. But yeah. now it's all bright and colorful. And, um, but that process, it happened fairly quickly. I mean, when I moved on to Millsaps Avenue, one, you have to figure out a way to pay your rent. That's important. So then I started doing festival images for posters all over for the state. So I would go everything from the Natchez Balloon Festival to, the, to uh, Clarksdale to the Mississippi Heritage Blues Festival and, you know, all these great ways that 
I had to learn to make a living. Which would pay off in the future, which we'll get to in a minute. Yes, yes. exactly. So that, um, that early just need to pay the bills really allowed me to focus, yeah. to put the fire under me, right? To really say, what is my work gonna look like? Right. And what am I doing as an artist? What do I stand for? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I think that's a lot of artists they love the art part of it, yeah. but they can't quite fat. They can't do the left brain and the right brain part at the same time. <clears throat> and yeah. so, I mean, you and Wyatt Waters, I mean, there's a few folks that I think understand the business side of it very well. Well, and, I have and an that's engineering not an mind too and yeah. an art mind. Yeah, so I mean, that's not weird. a bad thing at all. Right. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why you have your own gallery. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, as an independent artist, it gives us the opportunity to no, as Malcolm White once told me, you look in the mirror and you know you're the one responsible right. for selling it that day. Yeah. It's not somebody else. So. Well, you know the product. Right. That's yeah, true, too. You do. And you get to keep yeah. all the money. <laughs> well, then there's that. But that's well, out loud. Yeah. I'm sorry. I might have to edit that out. Yeah, that's good. Now that, so. but, the, but your gallery's great, and it's right there in downtown Vicksburg. Yep, And it is. downtown Vicksburg, which, I mean, I love all the people that 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 you know the re the new brew pub they've got there. Oh right. my word! It's just exploding over yeah, there. It really know. is cool. And so yeah. you're you're really located. But why did you decide Vicksburg? Well, I had picked a spot in Jackson on mm -hmm. Ferris Street when they were developing that. Yes. Right. Many years ago. So I've been in Vicksburg almost thir well 13 years yeah. now. It's unbelievable. Oh, God, it just it like yesterday you moved out. There. I know. So I was uh, working. The same guys that developed Beale Street at the time were working on Ferris Street. Yeah. And he was a big collector and fan, was a super nice guy. And he had said, look, he was putting his wish list together of who all he would want on Ferris Street here. Yeah. And he plopped me right across from the Alamo Theater on that big corner. He said, design whatever you want. So I had uh, been thrilled to have that opportunity. I was thinking, okay, this could be a cool place. And then it just never materialized. So um. at that point, uh, I had taken a day trip over to Vicksburg and met, um, uh, I'm blanking on his name, but he put together the Palaces of Versailles and Jack yeah. used to own my building okay. briefly for a couple of years and he had done some renovation on it and turned it into the gallery, Jack Kyle. Okay. So when he was ready to move on, he had hurt his back and couldn't manage the building and stairs and all that. So it was like, you know, an opportunity to have live, live upstairs, workspace, Kind of like a hamster, though. After a while, you're down here, you know, you go upstairs and up and down, you never leave the building. So, but it's great. I'm, uh, with the opportunity that I have now mm -hmm. as an artist in residence. Yeah, let's get into that. Because, yeah. number one, we were just talking a little bit before the show. Yeah. I mean, we actually know some of the same people up in, you're up in Maryland now. Well, it's hard to say even. Uh, right now, I'm in Annapolis, Maryland as an artist in residence. So, you're just a Yankee now. You know, they don't, they're not Yankees. No, they're, they're from Maryland. Yes, they're from Maryland. So yeah. it took me a while to figure that out. But there is, if you go just south of D.C., which we're about 25 miles to the east of D.C. in yeah. Annapolis, there is a McAllister's. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and you can find, they do say y'all, what would y'all like? And you can get sweet tea if you want to. We were so. that way in California. We literally would drive like 25 minutes to go get fried chicken. Because we, we yeah. have, you have to lubricate your heart. Oh, yeah. Vitamin Stay G. In shape, yeah. But so. you're loving it. You're <laughs> loving doing the artist. Well, reasons. it's a beautiful place, and it came about because they had produced my traveling exhibition, the Blues at Home oh, show. Oh yeah. Which we got to get into all that too, because it's it was an amazing exhibition. It really so was. So having um, this particular space is called Maryland Hall of Performing and Creative Arts. Yeah. So they, this is an old brick high school where they now have art instruction. They house the oh, opera, yeah. the symphony. They have a big 850 seat auditorium that's gorgeous. And when they invited me to come uh, for two months, they had the Blues at Home show there. And we brought up Bobby Rush, Eden Brent, and Vasti Jackson for the night of the opening. So they were there present with their paintings. Mm -hmm. We moved everybody from, I mean, it was so electric. Marshall, every, you just had like chill bumps. It was so exciting to be with those guys. And they uh, moved everyone into the performing theater and we did an hour and a half program of really oral history and incredible music by the three of them. Yeah. So much so that uh, one of the patrons walked up to me after and he said, you know, I've had season tickets at the Kennedy Center in DC for years and years. And this was as good as, if not better than their, you know, 
performances. Well, so I mean, I, really just cool. knowing Bobby and knowing Vast I both, they can, oh, I mean, they yeah. don't have to play any music. They're so entertaining, such exactly. good storytellers. And so. Eden with that barrel house rock oh, and yeah. piano. I mean, everybody was just like, oh, it was so fun. Well, that's yeah. great. So are you enjoying the just, just being up? I mean, I, and the thing I think would be advantageous for doing it is if by, by the time you come back home, you're just going to have a whole new appreciation for being home. Exactly. Yeah. And with they invited me to apply so that's how this has come about so really? they said please we'd love to have you up here if yeah. you could do this so and it's a commitment of one to three years mm -hmm. and there's seven different artists and residents there so okay i'm surrounded by all this creativity and it really is different for a change than being in my studio in vicksburg you know plugging along by myself and it also is an opportunity to bring my work to a broader audience yeah which, I mean, I've shown all over the country through the years doing arts festivals and things, so I've right. done that, I've been out there. But to take, I guess, what I'm focused on yeah. as an artist, so the storytelling part of my work, right. taking this little break to not just focus on Mississippi in a way, but to also look at... Some more other. national issues, possibly. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, and, so. and you and I talked a little bit about what might be next, and you talk about... Well, I mean, the, the the Bloomberg grant here in Jackson right. about food inequity. Yes. It, I mean, and that definitely is a national story, but boy, we're living it right here in Mississippi. I know. As the hungriest state, um, my work, of course, has always um, looked to tell the heart of an issue yeah. that could bring people to more of an understanding place of it, just with the Katrina series and even with the blues series, the Living Blues Artist. Um, to focus on food insecurity, hunger issues in Mississippi yeah. would be a wonderful um, step for my work, I think. I'd love to focus, as is a national issue too. Mm -hmm. So to be able to tell um, a story of what's happening, not just locally, but to use that as a national platform. So right. we'll see. That'll be fun. Um, the Blues, we'll go to the Blues series, and just because that the timing on it was perfect because we were at that stage where we were starting to lose the, the last of the greats. But, I mean, your, your shot of B.B. King, for instance, that's, got a, that's priceless. Well, and you know? it, you know, this was a series that initially it came about because I was doing the Katrina, finishing the Katrina yeah. show, and I had just uh, done a walkthrough gallery up at Delta State or Delta State University. Or, yeah. Um, and they... It was a Sunday afternoon, and I'd driven back to Vicksburg from Cleveland. And just, of course, the Delta, just wide open, right? And I was just thinking about all the things that I had photographed there. And then I drove past, I was in, near Rolling Fork, and I drove past this little community, and it was made up mostly of a trailers, mm -hmm. you know, as you'll find in the Delta. And the whole place, I, as I drove past, it was just like, call my name. Wow, oh, Chris, you know. <laughs> And so much so that I literally had to stop and think about, okay, there's a story that is wanting to be told here. I have no idea what it is. I don't know who lives here. I don't have any idea, but what could we do? So I called my then gallery director, Lachlan Fields, and mm -hmm. I said, I want to do this project on this trailer park in Rolling Fork. And she said, no, you really want to tell the story of the blues, of what's been going on in the Mississippi Delta Let's talk about the living blues artists that are still there, not the history of the blues, but what's happening now. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that'd be good too. So that's how that focus came about. We pulled the project together, called it Blues at Home, Mississippi's Living Blues Artists, tried to round up all the information we could, who needed to be in the project. Because at the time, there were 97 living blues artists that were considered professional working yeah. legends. Well, I couldn't do 97. I had done 81 for Katrina. It almost killed me. <laughs> right. So let's focus on, I think we said 30. Think we ended up with 31. 31. Yeah. So it was Denise LaSalle, I think, that we added. And um, so approached everybody when we could find them. It was like moving, you know, grabbing a moving pinball, trying to get these guys. <laughs> They're not sitting around waiting for right. me to call and do the project. They're traveling all over the world or back in some remote, you know, over this hill, over this dirt creek, and over here to try to find everybody. And with Lachlan's help, we did the oral histories. Yeah, Lachlan said she was pregnant during the time, too. Oh, so just to make she, it that much more fun. Yes, yeah. it was exciting to see her pictures with each blues band, you <laughs> yeah. know, and she's getting bigger and bigger and bigger along the way. So, but everybody was so gracious. Such yeah. performers, such 
you know, incredible personalities and characters. And we tried to capture that through my images and then Lachlan's oral histories and pulled it all together in this traveling exhibition. So as it moved around the country, it was really exciting to see, you know, people, you would just tell them, what's your project? Well, it's, yeah. it's you get to see the image and hear their voices. These musicians through yeah. the wand would tell you where they're from in Mississippi, how they came to the blues, and then you would hear a snippet of their music. So it was really a wonderful experience and a great, as a great way to say to so many people, the blues are still alive in Mississippi. Right. We haven't lost all the greats. And of course, but we have of this project, we've lost nine. I know, I was, look, I was just looking at some of the names of B.B. King, but I mean, yeah. you did Terry Harmonica, Bean, T-Model Ford, and Cadillac John. young guys, Gosh, yeah. and they're young guys too. Yeah, but, and Charday, uh, Thomas is the youngest. She was 22 when I photographed her. Yeah. She's the fife player. Yeah. Up near Sardis, mm -hmm. incredible artist. And of course, the granddaughter of the great Otha Turner. So her legacy and his legacy is well documented through Bill Ferris's blues mm -hmm. projects. And she was just a joy. So, and even at 22, she had, I think it was Eric Clapton had called her and said, I want to bring you to New York to play on a project that I'm doing. And she said, let me get back to you, hung up the phone. She called one of her brothers and said, of course, who is Eric Clapton? What? No way. And he's like, no way. call him back. <laughs> yeah. You're going. I mean, you know, she was just so young and yeah. yet so talented and still. So pretty cool to have her in the project. But to get to know all these people, I spent a year documenting them yeah. and photographing and collecting the histories. And then another two years, it premiered at Ole Miss mm -hmm. uh, in 20, I want to say, 2014, mm -hmm. so yeah, check my for, dates. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got them all written down here. Mick, you went from mixed media to multimedia though at that point. Yes, you really with did. Katrina, yeah. Yeah, you really did. And one of the projects, as, as we start winding down a little bit, but one of the projects that I, that I love that you did recently was working with the, the Vicksburg National Park, military park. Well, as a Vicksburger yeah. now. I love that, by the way, Vicksburger. That sounds great. It sounds I like something you see it on menu. I know. I thought at first I was like, well, I've been a Jacksonian, so is it a Vicksonian? I couldn't figure out what I was supposed <laughs> yeah. to be. So as a Vicksburger, uh, having that that state treasure right yeah. there in my backyard, um, we approached them and they've been very excited. And so, but then, uh, then of course, they uh, shut the government down and they froze the spending. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, <laughs> spending. That's, that's important. Yeah, so that was kind of tough. But we've made it through that. But I created a painting and I will hopefully continue to create a painting each year based yeah. on an historic photograph. Oh, nice. And I get to pick the image. Yeah, because you can't take the picture, obviously. I, exactly. Yeah. And my work has always been documented. You know, it's based always been on your work, document. yeah. Exactly. So that was fun to get to go sit with the with the guys and go through images. It's like, okay, well, do I want to focus on this or that or what? And so I finally settled on this wonderful image of this soldier. Um, of course, it's black and white because right. it's an old photograph. They handed it to me gracefully. Here, it's a Confederate soldier. Go create your painting from it. Okay, great. So as I'm researching to figure out what colors, what would really be. What color gray? Yeah, what yeah. color gray, what all the stuff. And it wasn't coming back that this guy was a Confederate. And yeah. all of a sudden I came up with some little insignia or something or stripe or his pack or whatever it was. It was like, no, he was a guy from New York, state militia, yeah. went off in gray. And that is the educational tool that they're gonna use through this. So to have, and when I called them, I said, you know, you realize this guy was Confederate? And they're like, well, our historian was gone that day. Oh, wow. So, sorry. <laughs> it's like, no problem. Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. It makes it even more exciting. Kind of a cooler story, exactly. to be honest with you. Because, number one, running around with a gray uniform probably was not good for life expectancy. Exactly. And that's what they were talking about, how difficult it was at Manassas to everybody. Nobody really knew who they yeah. were shooting at. So, when so, they, but to do the project, to yeah. bring my own color to it, which is right. what I always do, it really came alive. The image is really beautiful, and the look on his face is haunting, Isn't too. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It really is. Just that intensity that he yeah. was just so focused. I just love the image, and I'm really pleased with it. And we were fortunate to have Thad McLaurin here was the sponsor yeah. for the piece. He's a big historian, big, hilarious guy, and great fan. So it was fun to work with him. So he owns the original piece, and then we were allowed to create merchandise and stuff for the park. That's right. So they'll use it as an educational tool and then I saw the t shirts. Yeah. They came out cool. Neat. Yeah. So, you know, 
and now they have a few, I think, over there in the, in the visitor center. So you can always get them at the gallery too, or online or whatever. So artists in residence, you're gonna probably work on the food insecurity, then what's after that? Just whatever comes up next? That's the beauty of it, I guess. You, you're, you, I mean, you're your own boss. Well, exactly, and I still do some commission work too yeah. through the years. I will work for uh, individuals doing family portrait pieces from either their family historic photos yeah. or current images or I'll create new photographs and print those and paint that too so that it takes a village. Exactly. Yeah. Final final question I guess. Yeah. Do you ever just wake up in the morning and go I can't believe that I get to do this for a living? You know that's a wonderful question and yes I do every day throughout the day. But some days it is, it is work too. Well some, some days. days when I stand up to paint and do you know my hip doesn't really work like it used to. <laughs> So when I think of that, yes, I'm still very grateful. Or you're this close to it and you realize I can't see the painting anymore. Yeah, I gotta you have get, to get a shot glasses. for tendonitis in your elbow and just stuff like that. But you know. see, that's the thing people just don't understand. Us artists suffer. We it, oh, <laughs> completely. <laughs> what we do for our art. Right, exactly. I have really enjoyed getting to sit down and talk to you. Like I said, I'm a huge fan, and well, so I'm just I, every time you have a success, I just cheer. Well, very sweet. Because it's Thank great for so the much. state of Mississippi. Well, I have been an ambassador for Mississippi for a long time. Yeah. And I consider it my life's greatest calling. Yeah. So well, I love Mississippi and I hope it shows my work. So. Well, thank you for coming in. Always good to see you. Thank you, Marshall. It's All been right. wonderful.